Could Mercedes continue their domination in qualifying at Suzuka? Could Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel get closer to Mercedes on Saturday? And just what could Red Bull do? Find out in this video. The conditions for qualifying at Suzuka to say the least were not great. One minute it was dry and next minute it was raining. You never knew what the weather was actually going to do. But eventually brought about a Mercedes 1-2. Lewis Hamilton is on pole from Valtteri Bottas second, Max Verstappen third, Kimi Raikkonen fourth and Romain Grosjean in P5. Then it's Brendan Hartley in P6, Pierre Gasly P7, Esteban Ocon P8, Sebastian Vettel P9 and Sergio Perez in 10th. From P11 to P15 is Charles Leclerc, Kevin Magnussen, Carlos Sainz, Lance Stroll and Daniel Ricciardo. With Hulkenberg, Sorokin, Fernando Alonso, Stoffel Van Dorn and Marcus Ericsson being knocked out in Q1. Quite an unusual session. And to start off this review, let's look at the top teams and how they did. In Friday practice, Mercedes were clearly the class of the field, getting a 1-2 in practice 1 and practice 2, and were massive favourites for pole position going into qualifying. And that is exactly what they got, with Lewis Hamilton getting his 80th pole position, with again another stellar lap. At times, Sebastian Vettel and the Ferrari got a bit closer to Hamilton, but no one was going to stop Lewis today. He has just been way too fast. And this is what he had to say after his pole position. The last six years with this team have been incredible. And I'm so proud of everyone and so grateful for everyone's hard work. Which has enabled me to go out and exploit my own abilities. He is absolutely right. Mercedes for the last few races have given him one hell of a car. Which is exactly why he is going to win the world championship. And if he does win the Grand Prix, then him winning the title is very close. And by the way guys, here is clear proof of Lewis Hamilton's dominance this weekend. He was first in practice 1 and first in practice 2. And then in practice 3 was fastest again. And completed that with a pole position. He has dominated in Japan. Valtteri Bottas though also did a good job in P2. Yes, he was not as fast as Lewis. But Hamilton has always been better at Suzuka. Let's be honest, we weren't expecting Valtteri to be as quick. Even though he was slightly faster in Q2. But most of the time around this track, Lewis is just better. But this is what Valtteri said after qualifying. It might have looked like a hectic session from the outside. But inside, everything was so calm. We stuck to our plan and made the right choices. That is something Mercedes consistently do. And is why they are so dominant. And I think they will dominate the Grand Prix. They clearly have the fastest car. And are starting on the harder compound of tyre. So they will be absolutely fine on their tyres. Just how can they be stopped? Once again coming into qualifying Ferrari were not looking too bad. After a competitive showing in practice 3. But then as ever they bulged it up. In what was a horrible Q3. At the start of the session they went out on intermediate tyres, even though the track was dry. And when they realised that they came back in for dry tyres. But then both drivers made a mistake on their quickest run. And just when they went for another lap, it started raining. What a disastrous session. But a clear example of why their strategist has to be fired. Because their Q3 was so poorly thought out. Who thought what they did was actually a good plan? And this disaster left Sebastian Vettel qualifying in P9. But he will start the Grand Prix in 8th because of a penalty for Esteban Ocon. But still, that is a poor result. And this is what Sebastian had to say. At the beginning of Q3, I was asked if it was okay for me to go out on Inters and I said yes. Obviously, it was the wrong decision. And now it's easy to say. But it could have been the other way round. We thought there could have been more rain. But in the end, it didn't come. If it rained five minutes before, it would have been a different story. However, it wasn't our session in terms of timing. And we've been through similar situations a couple of times so far. We are a team. So now we accept together the consequences. Now I do see the point that Sebastian is trying to make. But for me, it was unnecessary to take that risk. They had to at least be on the second row of the grid. To try somehow and compete with Mercedes. But I think they took an unnecessary risk. 
If all the other teams could see was not ready for intermediate tyres, then why couldn't Ferrari? I really don't get it anymore. It's like they're trying to mess up. At least though Kimi Raikkonen is in P4, so I guess they can still get a podium. But Kimi should have got third if he did not make a mistake at Spoon. But of course he did make that mistake. Ferrari are in for a tough race. One that will probably be unsuccessful. Because of the rain in Q3, Max Verstappen actually qualified higher than expected. Up in a very good P3. A great position to start from. Considering in normal conditions he probably would have started in P5. Yes, he probably was a bit lucky, but you have to be there in the first place. And that's exactly what he did. This is what he said after the session. The hard work the guys put in overnight showed, and meant I could have a good qualifying session. We need to concentrate on doing the best possible strategy from our side, and then hopefully finish on the podium. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he got a podium, because Red Bull's race pace is actually not looking too bad. Especially compared to Ferrari who are wearing out their tyres. It was a difficult session though for Daniel Ricciardo. Qualifying down in P15. Because of another reliability issue. How many has he had now? It just keeps on happening. Problem after problem after problem. I feel so sorry for Daniel. He does deserve a lot more. And this is what the depressed Aussie said. As soon as I came through the last chicane to start my fast lap. I immediately felt that something was wrong. I still want to do the best I can for Red Bull until the end of the year, and every race is important. I hope these issues don't follow him to Renault for 2019. And just to prove how much bad luck he has had, look at this. Ever since his victory in Monaco, he has had some bad luck. He's ended up having four retirements. If you include this race as well, he's had to start outside the top 10 five times. Mostly because of poor reliability. His best race result in that time is only P4. And has scored 62 points. Now since Monaco, Ricardo has not been as good. But let's be honest guys, he has had a lot of bad luck. You can't deny it. And this looks set to continue for the rest of 2018. But at least for Red Bull with Max Verstappen, they can get a podium. So a good result for the team is still very possible. Now though, let's go on to the midfield and see how they did on Saturday. In qualifying, McLaren probably had the worst car. That's the first time in a long time that's happened. 18th and 19th with both cars. Not even Fernando Alonso could drag this crap car into Q2. That's just how bad this car is. How have they fallen this far? In 2012, they had the fastest car on the grid, but now the slowest. How does that happen? I don't even know anymore. But McLaren's race is going to be largely forgettable. Also not doing well was Renault, as Nico Hülkenberg was knocked out in Q1. Now even though I thought Renault would be quite poor this weekend, I didn't see Hülkenberg getting knocked out in Q1. They are especially poor this weekend. And the best Carlos Sainz could do was P13. But the conditions at the end of Q2 did not help, as it rained when he was trying to improve his lap time. So nothing really he could do. But honestly guys, at this point I just don't see how Renault can hold off Haas for fourth. They're so far behind the front of the midfield. How can they possibly beat teams like Haas and Force India? Especially now with the worst engine on the grid. How can you possibly compete? And that's something I don't see them doing in the Grand Prix with Haas. Competing. Up until Q3 it looked as though Force India were going to get a very good result in qualifying. As they were very fast in Q1 and Q2. But also like Ferrari misread the conditions. By putting too much fuel in the car. And this is what Esteban Ocon had to say about it. 8th place is okay. But I'm not satisfied because we didn't maximise our potential today. Our approach to Q3 meant we were fueled up for a few laps, because we felt the track would dry up and keep improving. In reality, the track was already quite dry, right from the start of Q3, and that's when the track was at its best. But we were heavy on fuel. Then by the time we started our second run, the rain was getting heavier, 
and not making it better is Esteban Ocon's grid penalty for going too fast under the red flag in Q1, meaning that Ocon will start in P11 and Sergio Perez will start in P9. Not really the greatest result, but they should have the race pace to score points with both cars tomorrow. Williams weren't actually that bad, as Lance Stroll got into Q2 with a very impressive lap at the end of Q1. So, bravo to him. And Sorokin was pretty good in P17. So Williams might not actually have that bad a race. They should be at least ahead of McLaren. So race day could be good for Williams. Toro Rosso and Honda needed a big performance in front of their home fans. And that is exactly what they gave. With Brendan Hartley P6 and Pierre Gasly in P7. What a result. Their best qualifying of the season without a doubt. And what a way to do it at Suzuka. Yes, they were a bit lucky with the conditions in Q3. But they got some very good lap times in when they did. And I think they deserve to qualify where they did. I'm especially happy though for Brendan Hartley. He's had a tough time in 2018 and this is great to see. And he was very happy after qualifying. This is what he said. I was so happy with that. I was actually a bit emotional on the inlap. I wouldn't normally get emotional, but it was just the build-up of all the effort we've put in and the struggles I've been having at times during the season. It was nice that today everything worked and went my way and I delivered when I needed to. And if he's going to keep his seat at Toro Rosso, that's exactly what he needs to do. However slim his chances are of keeping that seat. So great there for Brendan. And hopefully for him, Gasly, Toro Rosso and Honda, race day will be a great day. Qualifying for Haas with at least one of their cars was good, with Roman Grosjean on qualifying in P5, one that him and the team absolutely needed. Of course in their battle in the constructors with Renault, K-Mag though had a bit of bad luck, missing out on the best conditions in Q2, and when he went for a lap at the end of Q2 it was now raining thus destroying his session, but at least his car is good enough to score points in the race. But again for Roman, it was a great performance, qualifying at the front of that midfield battle, and I believe is also starting on the soft compound tyres for the race, so he is looking very good, and could be in for a strong result, and I hope he does get one. And finally is Sauber whose qualifying was not too good. First for Marcus Ericsson who crashed out in Q1, causing the red flag, thus why he qualified in last place. And then Charles Leclerc like K-Mag and Carlos Sainz missed out on the best conditions in Q2. That's why he got knocked out. But Sauber do have the race pace to score some serious points. And I believe they're going to do so. Their car this weekend has been mightily fast. But that's it guys for this review of qualifying. This is what is coming up on the channel on Sunday in terms of content. At 10 past 5 UK time in the morning I'm going live for the race watch along. And then live again at 8.30am for the race reaction. Hopefully all of you can join me for that. It would be great as always to have you along. But that's it for qualifying at Suzuka. Quite a mixed up session. And I think that's going to make for quite an exciting Japanese Grand Prix. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys as well to join my Discord server. There's a link below down in the description also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix and what are your predictions for tomorrow's race. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.